Hello there guys, it's Michael here and in this video I'm going to give you a simple routine that you can use to build up your ability to switch between different power cords and of course by extension different bar cords very, very simply. Now if you can develop the ability to change where you're playing your power cords and transition from one fret to the other really, really smoothly, then that is going to unlock thousands of songs for you. Literally most of the rock guitar repertoire, everything from the classic rock of the 70s right up to the grunge in the 90s and beyond in the 2000s, all uses power chords. And often we're just chugging away on a single string or maybe across string five and string six using power chord shapes. Everyone from ACDC and Metallica to Green Day and Blink-182 and a lot of modern bands like Imagine Dragons all use power chords. So if you can master the power chord shape and get really good at changing between it smoothly, you'll be able to play countless songs. It's also worth pointing out that bar chords, which are played primarily on the acoustic guitar, but of course are used in every kind of guitar playing and every kind of genre of music, are just an extension of our power chords. The power chord is the bass level, the first three strings of any bar chord. So practicing this exercise at a fundamental level with power chords is going to aid our bar chords as well. So our exercise today is gonna to be in two parts. One is going to involve transitioning from one fret to another fret on a single string. And the second part is going to involve transitioning from one string to another string. Now if we can master both of these movements, both a horizontal movement and a vertical movement, then we are gonna have 90% of what we need to play and change. And then when we add in a diagonal movement, for example, going from fret five on one string to fret seven on another string, if we can get these movements down with one finger and then power chords and then with bar chords, we will have everything that we need in order to play songs. Now my thinking behind this is very simple. If we wanna get good at baseball, for example, we just need to practice hitting the ball, throwing the ball and catching the ball and maybe sprinting. There are only four skills that we really need to practice and if we can get good at those skills and be better than our opponent, then hypothetically, we will win out over our opponent or our team collaboratively. If everyone does better than every person on the opponent's team, then of course, we are going to win. So by default and the same logic, if we are going to practice these isolated movements which make up the songs by getting good at all these movements when it comes game time actually playing the song, we will have practiced everything we need to execute these movements at a high level and be confident in playing them, which is gonna to contribute to you sounding much better and the, the music that you're playing actually sounding like the song and not just blocks of chords. So here is part one of the exercise. We're just gonna take one finger and we're gonna go from fret five on string six to fret number six, just like this. So all you're gonna do is play fret five, fret six, fret five, fret six, fret five, fret six. Now, if you wanna challenge yourself further, grab out a metronome and put that on. So I've got my metronome here. I'm just using the Metro Timer app, which I think is fantastic. I've just set it to 60 beats per minute. And I'm just gonna play one note, click, nice and slow. So I'm picking on, on beat one, one, rest on beat two, beat three. Now when I get the hang of that, I can go from five to seven. And the important thing is I'm looking at my finger and looking at where it's going. So I'm playing fret five, I'm looking at fret seven. I move to fret seven, I'm looking back at fret five. So I will just continue to do that five, maybe 10 times until I can do it consistently without making mistakes. And once I've done five in a row or 10 in a row, whatever I'm comfortable with, I'm just gonna make it one fret longer. So I'm gonna go from fret five to fret six, 10 times. Once I can do that, I'm gonna go from five to seven and then five to eight. And I'm gonna continue that until I get all the way up to fret number 12. You may have to go to fret number 10 if you have an acoustic guitar and you can't reach that high. But once I can do that confidently, then I start going backwards. It will go six to 12 and then three to 12, sorry, four to 12, three to 12, two to 12, then one to 12. So I'm getting used to doing these big horizontal movements and basically not having to look. Once I get really comfortable with it, I won't have to look. But in the beginning, I wanna look at my first finger, look at the target, move to the target, look at fret five, look at fret 12. And again, if we do the metronome, you just need across the space of four counts, play on count one, one, mute, 12, mute. Beat one, beat three. Now, when you get really confident with that, you can give yourself one beat to make the change. Five, six, five, six, 
five, seven, five, seven, five, eight. You get the idea. I don't need to keep on playing there and expanding on that. So that's a basic level one. And what we want to do is get really used to making those changes without a metronome at first, then with a metronome. That's your first two levels. When it comes time for level number three, you are going to take your power chord shape and go back to doing one fret. You'll play the power chord on fret five and then move to the power chord on fret six. And you just want to get good at transitioning from one to the other, making sure your hand maintains that shape. You don't want to go finger one, finger two, finger one, finger two, finger one, finger two. What you want to do is make sure your hand locks into that shape, kind of like you're a Lego person with a fixed hand position. And you just want to play the first power chord, the second power chord, the first power chord, the second power chord, the first power chord, the second power chord. And once you can do that consistently, try it with a metronome. One count in between, always looking at the target zone. And once you've done your 10 reps, make it a little bit bigger. Gonna go five to seven. And once you've done that 10 times, go five to eight. And you can go all the way from five to 12 and then start going four, three, two, one, all the way up to 12. So you're doing these really big, long jumps. And of course, when you get the hang of that, give yourself one count instead of two. So that's basically how you get good at changing between power chords on a single string. And there are countless songs that just use power chords. Think the whole Nirvana repertoire, the whole Offspring repertoire, any of your 90s grunge bands are pretty much using power chords exclusively. So by getting good at this transition here from one to the other, you're going to be able to play tons of their repertoire. So once you get the hang of that, we can move up to the fourth level, which is going to be using our bar chords. And this isn't beginner stuff, guys, so this might be something you come to months down the track or even a year from now. Bar chords are very tricky. If you've been playing guitar for less than six months, I don't recommend that you try them, but it's great to know this exercise so that when you do go to practice your bar chords and learn songs with bar chords in them, this exercise will really help you seal the deal and get that technique down. So I'm just going to take my major bar chord on string number six. And of course, what I'm gonna do is just practice strumming on fret number five, then fret number six, five, and then six. And all I'm gonna do is get used to changing from one to the other. And then when I get the hang of that, basically I can go from fret five to fret seven. And then you know the drill from here, I'll go from five to eight, five to nine, and I will basically expand that out until I'm doing 12 fret jumps there. Now, there is some additional things you can do here. You can, of course, go from a major shape to a minor shape, and that's gonna be a good additional level that involves you changing between two shapes on the same strings. So that's a really, really important thing to do there. So guys, that is the first half of this exercise. And even if you did that, it will make enormous improvement in your power chords and your bar chords and your ability to change in between them. Now, the second part of this exercise involves changing strings. And we're gonna do pretty much the exact same thing, except we're gonna be going from string five to string six and back again. So the first thing that we do once again is just get used to doing this with one finger. I would go from string six fret five to string five. String six to string five. And I just wanna get good at changing between those two strings. Now my first finger is gonna be able to do that or needs to be able to go from one to the other, but so does my picking hand. And a great exercise is to do it five times looking at your first finger on your left hand or your fretting hand. And then do the next five looking at your picking hand. Then do the next five with your eyes shut. And that's gonna build up that independence of sight and basically get rid of that need to look at your fingers all the time. So that's basically what you do there. Then the next level, you can go and add some diagonal movement. So we go from five to six. String six fret five to string five fret six. And then eventually fret number seven. And then eventually fret number eight. And then you just keep on building it over and over. And of course you can add in the metronome to make it more challenging and give your timing some accountability there. But that is a great exercise and you just wanna get used to doing it with one finger and get really confident with it before you upgrade to the next level. So what is the next level? You guessed it, power chords. You're gonna to go to string five fret, uh, string six fret five and play the power chord there. 
Mind you, I'm just doing a two finger power chord. You can do a three finger one if you want, but in the beginning, once again, make it as easy as possible for yourself. Just use two fingers. So you're gonna go string six fret five to string five fret five. Six fret five, five fret five. And just do that 10 times, nice and slow, getting used to it. Again, trying to make sure your fingers move together. You don't want first finger and then second finger, first finger, second, first, second, first, second. When I say second, I mean the second finger in the chord, not my actual third finger, first and third, first and third. You wanna be, again, like a Lego man with a fixed hand position, and you're just moving it up and down to where it needs to go, as opposed to plonking one finger down at a time. So you go from fret five to fret five, and again, if you wanna do it looking at the left hand and the right hand, then eyes shut, that is a great additional step you can take to ensure that you get it down pat and build up that independence of sight. And then once you get the hang of that, you go from five to six. Then you go from five to seven. And you just keep on expanding it and making it bigger every single time. So once you get the hang of that, what you can do is expand to bar chords. And I can go from the major bar chord on string number six to the minor bar chord on string number five. And just go from this one to this one to this one, to this one, to this one, to this one, and then end up changing it. And I just wanna make it a, a greater distance every single time until I can confidently go from this shape here to this shape here, or as high as I can reach on my guitar. So guys, that pretty much summarizes the exercise. And the only thing you need to do from this point is basically add more interesting or more serious strumming patterns. So if you can confidently change and switch in time, whether it's uh, just one finger or whether it's power chords or even all the way up to the bar chords, the final step of this exercise is grab your metronome out again, pop it on about 60 beats per minute and challenge yourself to do four consecutive strums. So I would just do this. So I just want to give myself that one count split second to change. And then I would go up to the power chords. And then I can continue to make it longer or add in a greater distance there. But this is what's going to be like in the real song where you don't get to stop and change. And then I can go to eight picks or eight strums per note. So I'm playing eighth notes. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. So there you go. So basically what you wanna do is go through as many levels as you can, uh, cover all the distances that you can in a single practice session. Don't feel like you have to go all the way from fret one to fret 12 in the same practice session. You might just wanna spend five or 10 minutes working around about frets five to eight or nine, and then if that's all you can do in a single session, great. On the next day, add in the next one, next practice session, make it a bit longer until eventually a couple of weeks or a couple of practice sessions from now, you'll be covering greater distances. And then just increase the tempo on the metronome as you get more and more comfortable. But the main thing is to gradually increase things over time, let the muscle memory set in between practice sessions and not to rush straight to bar chords. Again, if you're a total beginner, just get used to one finger and then the power chords. And then six months down the track, you can start adding in the bar chords as you learn those and start using them in songs that you're playing. So guys, that is it for this lesson. Thank you so much for tuning in and watching. Please make sure you hit the like button and subscribe so you can keep up to date with some more awesome videos. And if you have any questions, if you've got any uh, topics for videos that you just wanna know about or problems that you're struggling with, make sure you put them in the comments below so that way I can make a video addressing those and help you out with the guitar playing there. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.